Hello friends, how's it going? Today's video is gonna be a little bit different um, It's not in a vlog format which I usually do but it's gonna be a draw with me but with a little bit of a twist My friend Darren and I have these really deep conversations late at night usually and we just like to talk about everything about life um, but we thought we would make it a, a podcast episode to like test the waters because we just really like the idea of talking and I don't know we wanted to see how it would do we thought we would start out with something more lighthearted so we're going to talk about art school and our experience going to art school. This is like one of those chill videos that you just pour a cup of tea, um, draw along with me, just put it on as background sound when you're washing the dishes or something. Um, if you don't like that type of video, this is not for you because it's like 30 minutes long. I hope you enjoy it anyways and yep. I have Darren with me here. Darren, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, um, I'm Darren. Uh, I've been Tiff's friend for around, I've known you for like four years now. Um, we first got to know each other from art school, like we both went to art center. Um, and the reason how I really got to know you was because we went on a study abroad together in Italy. And that's when we got really close. Yeah, because and we yeah. would drink soju every weekend. Okay, maybe not okay, soju. Not, not soju. I was having Negronis and a lot of wine. Yeah, and I was having spritz and whatever alcohol someone bought for me. Yeah, so we got to know each other in Italy. Um, but yeah, um, I work in the animation industry and right now I'm currently a background designer at Gaumont Animation. And I'll leave it at that so that I don't violate my NDA. So, yeah. <laughs> So today we're going to talk about art school and all things art. We're going to leave it pretty like up in the air and just let the conversation flow because obviously we're this isn't a legit podcast. We're just we just like to talk. And so we talk too much sometimes, I feel like. Yeah, we literally are always on a call like late at night talking about life and depression and anxiety and finances <laughs> for some reason. Okay, anyways, so a lot of you are creatives, I'm assuming, because you watch my videos and therefore you either have an interest in going to art school, you've either gone to art school already, or you're looking into going back to school, but in like the design art scene. I think one thing we should clarify though, like me and Tiffany, we were both the same majors, like we were both illustration. But like I was in, we were in different tracks. So I was in the entertainment track and Tiffany was in the design track. So for illustration design, I guess we were more focused on the editorial aspect of illustration. So that means like, I mean, editorial is like, maybe you're in the New York Times in a newspaper making illustrations for them or in like a magazine. Like there's like a CCA magazine. There's like a bunch of magazines you could be in or... I don't know how else to describe it. It's just, you're just making illustrations to convey messages for people. Yeah. And then for you? Uh, for us, like our track was more focused on the animation industry. So like we would basically learn to draw in a way that would work for animation. Um, it had a lot more, I think, foundational training than illustration design did, because we definitely had to take a lot more figure drawing classes, perspective classes, which I enjoyed so very much, and painting classes than you guys did. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would say so, because I think all the entertainment students, I would, I don't know, every time they're walking past me, they're carrying a giant, like, book. <laughs> Like those giant pads of papers and apparently like every homework assignment was like how many pages did you have to do for the, like assignments? Just I one? did like 15 pages of work in one week. Yeah. And these were like huge. one class. Yeah. yeah. The, like the papers they had were like the size of a TV. Like it's it's a huge piece of paper. And they used like the tiniest little like pencils? Was it coal race pencils or 
Prisma? Uh, those were Prisma colors. Um, we used them a lot for this one class I took, which was a layout class. And um, yeah, the funny thing is like, um, it, we did all our work in traditional media, like for our first couple years, but like now that I'm working professionally, the only thing I really touch is my Cintiq. <laughs> so everything has is like digital. I literally have not touched traditional in I think like two years. Versus like I think you definitely do a lot more traditional media stuff than like I do. Like all the stuff I do now, like my personal work, um, my work work, it's just all in, in Photoshop. Yeah. Which I sort of want to get back into using traditional media one day. Um, just because I feel like there is a freedom to it that digital media does not have. So, yeah. And yeah. experimentation, too. It, it has a lot more individuality. Yeah. Well, that's because if you mess up, you can't really undo that if it's traditional. But that's, like, the great part of it, because you just have to, like, if you make a mistake, you have to patch it up, like, by yeah. figuring out what material works best to cover things up. Um, well, also... For us, speed is really important. So being having that flexibility that digital has is definitely a plus. Yeah. So what was your fondest memory of Art Center or just going to art school in general? Uh, my fondest memory was actually meeting you guys and hanging out with all the friends that I made at Art Center. Like, as much as art school, I think it's really good for the program it had, like Art Center had a decent program. I think really the most important thing I got out of that was all the connections I made, all those bonds I made with different people. Like, I still keep in touch with all of my classmates, like my groups of friends that I hung out with, like including you. Um, how about you? Well... Oh, first off, I just want to say, like, I kind of agree with you on that because I feel like a big misconception with art school is that everything that you need for your career, you have to learn in school, but it's actually the total opposite. I learned everything I do today outside of school. I don't know if it's the same way for you, but like everything I learned that I do now, I actually learned from my full time position that I had previously. And I honestly don't remember anything I learned from school. Like maybe it's so ingrained into me that it's become like an art language, but I don't, I can't remember anything I did in college. Uh, well, actually I might be similar in a way, but I still, I still remember most of what I learned because I have to use it every day in what I do. And also I think it's just cause like I teach for so many classes that at a certain point they just got laser cut it into my brain like yeah. laser engraved but i do have to agree like a lot of the stuff i'm doing now i learned on the job yeah. i feel like going to art school like the benefits that you take away from it is probably like the like you get better at time management you get a better mindset which like like the mindset where you are faced with a problem and you have to figure it out yourself or like have that ability to figure it out yourself and just like I don't know it's what you said like having connections like those are I feel like the biggest things I took away from art school well you were like talking about discipline I mean that's what art center out of all the art schools is known for yeah. <laughs> it's like how like have like that um discipline and almost I want to say the boot camp mentality yeah uh, but I think that it is one really important thing we, like, I think you and I both did get out of our center was just how to learn to manage our time, um, how to basically, like, know how to work things in a way that is efficient. You have to strategize a way to get things done when you're faced with multiple tasks. So you're kind of like multitasking mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah, and a lot of the times, like, what happened at, when we were in school, at least for me, was, like, teachers would explain something, and they would might give a lecture on it, but they, a lot of the time, they would just throw you into the deep end <laughs> and let you figure it out, and actually, that was a really important skill for me to learn in school, because when I first started this job i literally had no idea what i was doing i was just like i'm gonna get fired <laughs> like oh my god the anxiety is real 
but yeah you just sort of learn how to fake it so you make it from yeah. high school and just learn how to figure out problems on your own without needing to have that instructor there the whole time because instructors can teach you a lot and, and like you do have to figure out a lot of things on your own and being self-sufficient in that way is actually pretty good mm -hmm. yeah for sure i agree 100 percent. okay I'm trying to think of one of my fondest memories of Art Center. Italy? Us? Me? Yeah, but because you already said that, so I'm trying to think of something a little bit different. But because I know like personally, when when I graduated Art Center, I was devastated in a way because <laughs> I like everyone else says they don't miss Art Center. They don't want to go back to school. But once I left, I felt so broken like I, wa I just wanted to you go were back in a weird funk i was because there's like all of a sudden there's no system to my life like all of a sudden i'm on my own for the first time and till this day i'm still figuring out like what to do because i like having that system but anyways i think my fondest memory of art center was probably connecting with the professors and students there but more if I'm pinpointing a more fond memory it would probably be when we would get so lost in working <laughs> to like the wee hours of the night like 12 a.m we're still down on like the basement <laughs> floor in like the photo studio and we're literally just like developing photos late at night and we would come out and the sky was dark because on the basement floor there are no windows you can't tell if it's day or night and i just love that feeling of just getting lost doing assignments and realizing you have to wake up at 8 a.m the next day to go to class <laughs> oh my god like i'm totally the opposite like i had those experiences too mm -hmm. um i would be in the computer lab to the point where people literally like every time they just expected to see me there every time like they went to the lab and but like i would be there until like i think 2 a.m or like 16 hours of the day the majority of the time yeah and i hated it <laughs> because there were no windows you know me i'm always like outside and going somewhere so me being trapped in a confined place with no windows no sense of time whatsoever was not something i look back that fondly on <laughs> but i mean i did meet a lot of make a lot of friends from working in those labs and we did build like that you're all suffering through hardship. together yeah you're suffering together so you can bond over the suffering i think art center compared to other art schools definitely you hear the word suffering a lot more yeah like people are literally just sleeping at school they some people shower at school sleep at school and like the labs all the mouses and keyboards they're all covered in like a, a layer of oil and like cheeto dust it's so disgusting but it's art center <laughs> for you it's like a hostel for students i mean we make it sound like if there were a lot of bad shit but actually it was generally for me actually a really good experience like i don't i i look back on a lot of what i did at art center very fondly and i feel like i did grow a lot yeah when i was at school for sure and you did too you I changed like, a lot from when i first came here i feel like we changed a lot after we graduated though yeah that too i think i changed a lot during school too i think during school because we're still kind of like dependent on people it's really hard mm. to see the change but like once we really like we we both moved out of home by the way so i feel like after we both moved out we became more different Inde independent <laughs> independent and like start figuring out ourselves a bit more i would say that is very true we both started out as really really quiet asian kids <laughs> well to be honest you're still pretty quiet well, not, not as quiet as you were before, but you're definitely more quiet than me. Um, yeah. I went from a quiet Asian kid to a loud, obnoxious Asian kid. Yeah, but you were, Darren was Mr. Popular in college. Everyone wanted to talk to Darren and be friends with Darren. I was I nobody. Find, I'm pretty sure no one remembers me. Uh, I don't know about that. I still find it really weird when people mention that I was Mr. Popular. I don't no, know it's, how I feel about it's that. true. You're like literally always surrounded by like a herd of like, uh, what do we call them? Fresh meat? 
Wait, what is that? <laughs> You mean freshmen? Yeah, we were like, no, you were always surrounded by like younger students, um, first termers, second termers, whatever, whoever you taught, or you're like with a bunch of friends and stuff. I was, I was just walking around solo, dude. <laughs> well, that's because I, 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 I teed for like a lot of classes. Like, um, I think I teed the maximum we could TA up to the point I graduated from like my fifth term on. Mm. Like for my last three years at our center, I literally just TA to the max and that's probably how people got to know me and people would find me for help and they actually, they still message me occasionally, even though I'm graduated on like advice for work or they want me to look over some of the work and yeah. stuff. So, yeah. I've always been kind of jealous of the people that got to be TAs because I think since second term, that's all I wanted. But like every year I would be waiting for teachers to like ask people to be their TAs or I would approach teachers and they would never, they, they're always like never available to take on a TA or they just don't ask me because I'm just that quiet kid that no one, no one really knows. <laughs> Well, you have to be a lot more aggressive than that. Um, yeah. I was. I always was the first person to ask, and also I was lucky to TA for a teacher that just really kept me for three years. One thing good about being a TA is you learn a lot more than just because you get to listen to the lectures over and over again, and also when you have to teach people, you learn to break things down. But it was also just um, having to deal with so many people, um, having to talk to so many people. I remember like. This one teacher, he would he would literally just like throw me in, into like the deep end and he would be like, okay, you're doing crit today. And he would just literally, I would just watch him sit in the, behind the students while I'm like me and the other TA were critting like students work. But actually like that was such an important lesson to learn because we learned how to be comfortable talking in front of other people. And when I do my work, a lot of time, Sometimes I have to present my stuff or like pitch something. So that actually helped a lot. Do you ever get like imposter syndrome? I think I do now. <laughs> <laughs> People are always telling me your work is fun. And I'm like, I don't know. I just, I'm still not happy with the work that oh. I'm producing right now. Even though I know it's a, at a higher level than before, but. Really? Because yeah. my mom told me yesterday that you had the best art out of all the people she knows. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Darren. <laughs> Darren has my mom's approval. <laughs> I'm going to have his links down below so you guys can look at it later. What is your experience with work-life balance at Art Center <laughs> compared to work-life balance now? I think even at Art Center, compared to a lot of people, I think, which actually surprised a lot of people when I was still at school, was I had definitely made sure to have a work-life balance. Like, I worked a lot, but I would give a lot of time for me that I could relax, like, have play. Like, it's really important because you can't just work all day. You'll, you'll get burnt out. Mm. Um, like, even when I had my final term at Art Center and I was graduating and freelancing and teaing, I still made sure to have time where I can, okay, go out on the weekends to go hiking or spend this amount of time exercising or going rock climbing. Right now, I think I still try to maintain that balance, but it's definitely a little bit different. Partially, it's just because we're in quarantine. And because of that, I get to my workstation has all of a sudden transferred to my home station. So even if I'm not working on it, I still see the stuff I'm working on and I'm just like, crap. But yeah, like I still try to make sure I have time for myself. Like I know when I'm getting burnt out. I know when I'm getting tired. And when I do do that, I definitely try to take, take steps to look at what I'm over working myself on and then like um, just find time for myself to relax. Like, you know, I go hiking almost every weekend. I make sure to have like a lot of time where I can just not think about work and relax. I know a lot of people that want to go to art center, they're always like the first thing they ask is, will I be getting enough sleep? Because art center is known as the school that doesn't allow you to sleep, which I thought is totally 
bullshit in my opinion. Okay, same here. Yeah. I, I think all the times I had to pull all nighters was the time that I did not. I just spent a lot of time like digging around because I yeah. didn't want to do the work, and then I just ended up pushing it to last minute. Like if you're on top of everything that you're given, it's not that hard to get your eight to nine hours of sleep a night. Like I don't think I've only pulled one full all nighter. I would say, and I stayed up till six, went to sleep, and woke up at like eleven. So I still got sleep. So it wasn't even like an all nighter. It's good for know. you. <laughs> I, don't I know, have to I sleep just... at school a couple of times, okay? But I feel like because of that, I never fully understood what burnout felt like, and so it really took a toll on me after I graduated and felt the burnout then. And at that time, I didn't have anything to catch me because when I was a student, I was still living with my parents. So if I burnt out or something, they would always still be there to like I don't know, wash my laundry, cook me food, take care of me, but. Burning out as an adult living on your own is the hardest thing ever. Like literally, my apartment was like a mess. I couldn't even handle my emotions. I would come home, I'd be drained as heck, and it was just like a very interesting experience that took a while to like bounce back on. So、uh... I felt exactly the same way, and I think it's only in the last couple of weeks that I finally, because a couple of weeks ago, you know, I was pretty burnt out. Yeah. Um, because. A lot of stuff was going on in my life.、Um, work was a lot,、uh, just a lot going on, and I realized I literally never took a break. Yeah. <laughs> like, because I I was already working before I graduated, and then I went from graduating to going full time. So I only had like a three week break between graduation. Yeah. So I never really got that graduation break that a lot of people got, which is nice because. It was a blessing. Like I always, like I'm very thankful that it's very rare for a lot of us to actually get jobs immediately graduating from school.、Mm. And I was lucky that I was already working for this company、um, before I graduated, and that I got to keep on working for them after I graduated. So that was like something that I'm always very thankful for. I think I paced myself a little bit better, but being in a work environment for the first time, yeah, like um. Having having such a steep learning curve definitely took a lot of took a toll on me. In addition to other emotional stuff,、mm-hmm. and you got to see me just exploding everywhere, yeah. <laughs> like、yeah. in the last couple months. All right, quick last topic because I I feel like a lot of people would want to hear us talk about this. How is it job hunting after graduating from art school? Because You've always heard of the starving artist. Like parents are always saying, you're not gonna make a living, like graduating from art school. You're gonna be in debt with like what sixty plus k, a hundred k in loans, and、um, yeah, I guess we should like talk cover how, how、okay. it is. Okay. Um, I do want to preface like everything I say for people that to take with a grain of salt. It's because everyone's experiences are are different. Like mine is won't compare to something that maybe you experience or maybe my friends experience. For me, I got lucky with this job because <laughs> one of my old teachers actually recommended me to this gig, and that's how I got hired onto it. But even then, in that period, I was still actively like. Looking for different places, like you saw me in my graduation year. Like even before I got close to the date of our graduation, I was already like constantly reaching out to people, like emailing people, like networking. I went to when I was at、um, CTN, which is a convention for animation people. I made I got a table and I made sure that I was talking to as much people as possible and、um, following up with them afterwards. So even before then, like I was making sure I was taking a lot of steps to make the transition easier. Because I remember someone said once, "You finding a job is fifty percent luck, and then the other half is opportunity." You can't control luck, but you can definitely like control the second part to a certain degree. So I was making sure, like, I was just trying to open as much doors as possible for myself. If that's the right way to put it. And actually, right now I am job hunting because my current 
job is ending. Like the nature of our, at least the animation industry is that we hop between jobs. And that's actually pretty normal. But whether I'm worried that I won't have another job lined up after this current gig, I'm not actually that worried. Like, I, I think it's definitely a lot easier when you, at least when you're in the industry, um, to like maintain that job, even though you're having to constantly hop around a little bit. But it's not as bad as people would think that, oh, we're a starving artist because I'm definitely not. I would <laughs> yeah. say, I would say like the living we make is like a pretty comfortable living. And it's definitely mm. like there's so many different routes you can go with art. Like, for example, he's going the like animation entertainment lane. Yeah. I'm on the other hand going on the more I would say it's a combination. It's like business, like small business owner, social media, bean. Yeah. I'm going to put bean because I don't want to say influencer. <laughs> social media well, person and also like freelancer and there's yeah. like there's so many more like being a freelancer in general you have like so many options you can do editorial freelance projects you can do branding for companies you can just do i don't know like merchandise design there's like so many things that you can pursue as an artist and I guess like artist is also a very general term because there's illustrators, there's designers, there's product designers, there's there's all everything you want to ever do. It's under art. Yeah, but I think the thing about that is because it's so general in a way, we actually have a lot of flexibility in what we can do. Like you, I've seen you done like do product design, yeah. and I think if you actually ever wanted to, you with some more like focus you can actually get into the animation industry if you want to not that you'll be interested i probably but, won't <laughs> i mean like for me like yeah my stuff i i i'm working in animation but that doesn't mean i can't apply my skills to say editorial or licensing or just stuff like that like keeping your avenues open and being aware that you have those avenues is really important and one thing that i really like learned from this one teacher that i stayed for for a long time was he worked at Disney for, I think, almost 20, 30 years. But even in, when he was working there, he was freelancing a lot. He had licensing gigs. Like, he had so much of these, like, extra sources of income, even though he's full-time at Disney. Um, but, like, seeing that just shows, basically, our skills can apply into a lot of different areas that we don't, we're not aware that it can apply, and it's pretty flexible. Yeah. You just sometimes have to, be be able to pivot according to those things. Um, I, I want to add in that when you're first starting out too, I would never, I would say don't say no unless it's like ethically bad to do this project or something. <laughs> like I would recommend just saying yes and seeing wh like where it leads you because for me growing up as an artist or like pursuing art, I feel like I was really opposed to a lot of things or like doing specific things like, ew, no, I'll never touch graphic design. Like graphic design isn't art, it's just type and like it's not pretty in like my context of like things I like. And I would always say like, ew, I don't like product design just because it makes more money doesn't mean I'm going to like it. And look where I am now. I haven't really turned down any opportunities and turns out I do like graphic design. I do like product design. I like everything that I hated as a kid just because people said it would make more money so I should pursue it. So I would say like be open to trying new things and be open to like just experimenting. Yeah. But don't let people take advantage of you. Because people take advantage of artists all the time and do yes. not let them do that. Know your worth. Uh, do not charge less than your worth. Yeah, and if they can't take it, they can suck it. <laughs> yeah, there, there will always be more opportunities and there will be people that respect you for what you do. So I wouldn't take anything less than what you want. Unless there's like, I don't know, you can always negotiate things too, so... People do have to be aware it took us a lot of work and a lot of effort to get to be in this position where we do have all these avenues. Like Tiff, you're one of you're probably one of the hardest working people I know, even though right now you're just freelancing. Oh. I think people like think like 
because you're a freelancer, oh, that means you have a lot of time to yourself. But in reality, I think you probably work more than me. I'm freaking working till like 10 p.m. every single day. I'm just a workaholic. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, like, if you want to compare me and Sid's schedule, she works like that. I work from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And after that, that's my cutoff. I just, like, zone out for the rest of the night, soak in my tub reading, like, a book. It is a lot of work to get here. Like, yeah. we, we worked really hard to get to this point and people do have to be aware of that like you can have i was talking to someone once and we were discussing this and he was basically saying like um you can have a dream but that dream won't really amount to anything like it'll just stay a dream unless you really work hard for it like you had your dream and i had my dream and we both worked our asses off in yeah. school and after school to get to this point where we can be talking about this. Yeah, I don't plan on stopping working my ass off for a long time. <laughs> I'll keep working till the day I die if I have to. <laughs> you, you can really see like how the paths we took are so really different. Yeah. Um, but in a way, like some of the stuff we went through is really similar to. All right, so we should probably end this here because we have like 40 minutes of audio. <laughs> I'll see you next week in an actual vlog. Thanks for being on my YouTube channel. Of course, anything for you, Tiffany. I'll leave all his links down below and you can go look at it if you want to. He has really, really pretty works. <laughs> go give him some love. Oh, also disclaimer, I don't post much, so don't expect much. <laughs> Bye. Bye.